Thank you, Dr. Teo, for the uh, kind introduction, and uh, I would like to thank the uh, Agenomic for the uh, invitation to this uh, symposium. Uh, for me to have such a chance to uh, meet, meet those uh, experts in the uh, cancer genomic uh, diagnosis. So this is not the first page, actually. <laughs> so I'm Jack Lee, a clinical oncologist in Hong Kong, and uh, it's really my pleasure to share with you my little experience on using uh, next generation sequencing in non-cancer patients. I would also uh, mention some of the intellectual trials, and uh, in fact, many of which has already mentioned by Dr. Chen, so I'll just keep it uh, as quick as possible. <laughs> so this is my disclosures, and this is my uh, disclaimer. The content today would be uh, around uh, five to 10 minutes on the diagnostic algorithm for the first line uh, lung cancer treatment decisions. And then before I move on to the uh, case uh, illustrations, uh, to begin with, the uh, EGFR out and then other actionable mutation. Finally, some mutation of unknown uncertainty. So in fact, there have been an improved understanding of lung adenocarcinoma over the past 15, year, 15 years. In year 2003, we know little about lung adenocarcinoma, except that it might respond better to certain kind of chemotherapy. In year 2014, there are already more than 10 actionable mutation being identified. By the time of uh, last year's, there has been more than 85% of the lung adenocarcinoma harboring such an uh, actionable immunization. So in fact, I would not regard KWAS as a negative predictor for an immunotrepon inhibitor. If for any mutation that's present, you exclude immunotherapy, you are excluding 80, more than 85% of the lung adenocarcinoma. I want to show you the uh, molecular profile strategy uh, employed by the Memorial Sloan Cancer and Cancer Centers. To begin with the surgical specimen as large as possible and also uh, save uh, effusion and scientists for cell bots and do a combinational parallel weapon testing and comprehensive profiling. He tried to save as little, uh, as much uh, slides as possible for the NGS testings. So basically, he just uh, do the IXC, IXC for, for one adenomarker, one squamous marker, and our IXC for the commonest two uh, EGFR mutations, ALK RXC, WOS RXC, PD1 RXC. Concurrently, there will be a plasma testing with targeted panel of over 10 genes with turnaround time just five to seven days. Everybody was subject to lex generation sequencing using their in-house MSK impact study, detecting over 400 uh, genes uh, simultaneously reported TMB and also microsexual insecticity uh, status. And for selected cases, they will send for RNA sequencing. In fact, RNA sequencing is very important, and it complements our DNA-based NGS techniques. In patients said to be a low drug mutation on DNA NGS, if you send it for RNA sequencing, 40% of which will become detectable, will reveal a detectable, well-actionable fusions, such as WOS1, uh, um, ALK, or MAC, Exon 14 spicing mutations, and among which 80% of which can derive a clinical benefit. And this is my approach. For patients with radiological diagnosis of uh, metastatic lung cancers, I would do liquid biopsy if the tumor uh, site is too difficult or too risky to obtain. Uh, if there's any imminent symptoms of organ, organ decompensations, you need to have, uh, you need have, you, you need to have a very uh, uh, POM actions, and we know that for certain liquid biopsy, the result can be come back in just less than 48 hours. In patients with bone, nephi, and adrenal metastasis, that greatly increases the sensitivity of liquid biopsy. I will also do, do that in patients who are left smoker with a high pretest probability of EGFR mutation, for example, I will also do the liquid biopsy. In patients that are positive, I will start the TKI straight ahead. In Asian, with high EGFR mutation prevalence, for the level of smoker, 50% of chance you detect an EGFR mutation. Otherwise, just 10%. For the tissue biopsy, I would just do the IXC for ALK and uh, the COPAS EGFR version 2 for EGFR mutation. For patients that are negative on both, I would send it for electronic sequencing using add on code. And I would not, in fact, wait for the result to become back which often takes three weeks time before I initiate the treatment. But most of the patient, I would, I would start with uh, combination immunotherapy uh, with uh, chemotherapy. So this is the, uh, the first part. The second part, I would uh, 
illustrate a number of uh, real clinical cases. To begin with, the EGFR case. It's a 65 years old a chronic smoker with rectal resection done before uh, a T4 and not amyloid disease EGFR or negative. Isolated hyaluronic lymph node relapse uh, one year later with received the chemo irradiations. And uh, later, there's a brain and bone progression chemotherapy. And at later, cause of the disease, I sent for the uh, add on code. And you come back to the exon 20 insertions. To begin with, is, is EGF file negative? How can you become an exon 20 insertion positive? In fact, for those uh, so called rapid tests for the uh, um, EGF file mutation, not all types of uh, e Karma mutation in exon 20 will be detected. So you, in that case, you need NGS. If you look into the exon 20 insertions, uh, it uh, uh, comprise of around 10% of all types of EGFR mutations. And for among non-traditional EGFR mutations, it occupy half of the case. Mentioned by Dr. Chen that except for the A763 insertion FQEA mutations that in fact do respond to first or second generation in GFL TKI. Otherwise, X20 muta mutations has very low response rate only. If you put it in it, the cohort has 8% response rate. If it put this uh, type of mutation out, the response rate is as low as just 3%. In the future, there's um, so much better uh, uh, X120 specific inhibitor available for post it demonstrated an objective response rate of 55%. Three weeks in ASCO, they reported to detect CFN88 uh, molecules, which has a comparable objective response rate around 40 to 50%. And the good thing of that is that they have a better side effect profile in comparison to post with just those reductions are uh, one third of the chance uh, in comparison to post The second case is, again, an EGF file case. Uh, to begin with, uh, um, there's um, a surgery done for a T2N uh, disease, adenocarcinoma. Uh, four years later, there's poor metastasis. I recruited the patient in the clinical trials, basically continued the EGFR TKI as long as possible until there's a rapid disease progression. At the time of progression, liquid biopsy demonstrated the presence of T798 mutation and we were put on the uh, osimectolib. But uh, just uh, one year later, there's a progression with loose SCF lymph node and bone metastasis. At that time, a biopsy the SCF lymph node out and send it for uh, T2NGS testing. In fact, I tried to look for the uh, T7I, uh, C7I7S mutation and MET amplification, but I'm unable to look at any. That's why I can only put her on a chemotherapy, even at the time he's over 70 years old. If you look into the mechanism of acquired resistance to EGFR TKI, Except T7ITM, none of them has uh, an FDA-approved therapy. For small cell lung cancer transformation, you may consider using a top side uh, pectinum chemotherapy, but for all others, no approved therapy. Soon, I think the exception will be MET amplification. Uh, more and more case reports demonstrated the usefulness of um, MET inhibitor in monotherapy or in combinations after patient having acquired MET amplifications um, to EGFR therapy. I personally also encountered two cases that do respond to um, uh, just quetzalcoatlip. Uh, the quoted response rate is around 35 to 40%. But fortunately, uh, both patients do respond. I also look for the C797S mutation, uh, the, no, the C797S uh, mutations and its relationship with the t 7 9 mutations. If this mutation happened on the same allele for the, uh, tu on the tumor cells, you have to use chemotherapy. If it happened in different allele, uh, then you may consider using combination first and second generation, <coughs> third generation uh, uh, EGFR TKI. If there is loss of t 7 9 mutations, that c 7 s mutation would not affect the binding of the usual first and second generation EGFR TKI. So you can use back the first or second generation EGFR TKI. So um, this is the graph that I've also sold to um, people to tell you the time point for uh, rebiopsy. In fact, whenever there's a non-oligoprogressive situations, you have to do the biopsy. 
be that quick or tissue biopsy. And according to the type of resistance mechanisms, you can use uh, a different way to tackle the problem. And many of these uh, combination therapy has been uh, demonstrated by the uh, professor uh, Cho already. So the summary for the EGFL, the next generation sequencing help us to predict the primary EGFL inhibitor resistance, subtyping the exon 20 insertion, some of which do respond to the usual EGFL TKI. And we we'll also try to look for other res intrinsic resistance mechanism that may predict a shorter progression free survival for that particular patient, such as the low fold P7, uh, PICVCA, HER2, or loss of P10. It also helps us to look for actionable resistance. After first or second generation, the uh, uh, EGFLTK guy, you look for T719 mutation and MET amplification. After third generation EGFLTK guy, you look for the uh, C797S and its relationship with the T719 mutation, as well as the MET amplification, et cetera. So the second part um, of the clinical cases uh, would be the ALK mutations. So in fact, I want to show you, uh, we can actually uh, look for the uh, possible uh, driving mutation by just some clinical features. If in patient, for example, for uh, ALK uh, mutation, if the patient is a former or current smoker, th the chance of uh, ALK mutation is just a five, three to five percent chance. But if the patient is a lever smoker, the chance of uh, ALK fusion will be increased to one sixth of the time. If the patient is at the same time lever smoker and EGFL negative, the chance of uh, ALK rearrangement will be even uh, double to one third of the chance. Alexstrasza has demonstrated more than 10 years ago by just looking at the clinical f uh, features, whether it's a, a female Asian nervous smoker or adenocarcinoma, by satisfying two of these four uh, criteria, you've got 30% chance of uh, out fusions. Uh. If it's at the same time EGFL negative, one third of John uh, out uh, mutants. The second case is a 60 years old male liver smoker. He is a consultant neurologist with uh, abdominal lymph node metastasis, EGFL negative, out positive on both IFC and FISH. He was treated uh, as early as in year 2011, and he's still alive now. Um, we be treated with chemotherapy first, and then there's progression put on crisotilib, and uh, later on there's a uh, isolated uh, CNS progression with uh, multiple brain and brainstem metastasis, as shown here. At the time, we don't have much options. We uh, uh, put him on a sorotidib. He kind of refused all types of uh, brain irradiations. Um, and uh, he enjoyed that uh, sorotidib for uh, over one year before there's further isolated CNS progressions. At the time, I tried for the ad monitoring. I don't find any uh, LILC uh, uh, gatekeeper mutations, and I switched him on uh, electilib. And just after uh, two months of electricity, the uh, multiple brain metastasis disappeared. That has to be to do with the SNS penetrating property of electricity. In fact, there are three types of uh, progressive disease. One would be a systemic progression. You have progression everywhere, and you have to switch your therapy. The second is oligo progressions. By just one to four areas of um, progressions, you do surgery, do radiation to abrade it, and it's supposed to be the only areas that harbor the resistant cones. And after that, you can continue with the original TKI. And the third type is the CNS-only progressions. That has to do with the CNS penetration of the drugs. For crisotilib, it's only just 0.05% penetration into the brain. For liver agents, it's over 80%. In, in that situation, you switch a low CNS penetrating agent to a high penetrating agents, the expected response rate is approaching 100%. So among the next generation out inhibitor, only electilib and nolactilib are long locked to be a p glycoprotein substrate. So making them uh, a, a possibility of uh, achieving CNS uh, percentage of over 80%. So the third case is a uh, uh, um, 70 years old males uh, with uh, out positivity on pre-fusions, prior to chemotherapy, could certainly 
and recruited into a clinical trial being randomized to alexilib. He just had a very short uh, duration of his bond on alexilib for just uh, eight to nine months. At the time of progression, I tr tracked the liquid biopsy. I found the L1196M mutations. If you look into the LL96M mutation, um, is to be here, okay? And you look for the uh, figure below the serotilib and uh, alectilib. You see that serotilib, in theoretically, is 10 times more potent than alectilib for that type of gatekeeper mutation. For that reason, I put him on uh, serotilib. Because the patient is over 75 years old, I start with a low dose, and still there's side effect. There's a dose reductions, and that makes him only uh, able to uh, enjoy the uh, tumor control for just uh, four to five months before there's further progression. So you have uh, come across to this graph before. We just look at the lower part. For, for, for any time there's a progressive disease, uh, non-progressive, non-oligoprogressive disease, you have to do the uh, tumor biopsy. And depends on the types of resistant mechanisms you can choose the most appropriate next life of ALK inhibitor. It may not be true after the post cristotative situations, but definitely uh, recommended after any second generation or third generation ALK inhibitor use. So in summary, for ALK uh, case, in liver smoker, there's a very high chance of actionable mutation. We will never just satisfy on the lactative uh, EGFL and ALK results. Like a biopsy can help identify mutation in patients without suitable tumor tissues. For lexoration sequencing on we biopsy specimen of ALK or to adenocarcinoma lung, it help us, it can identify specific acquired mutation and, and accordingly to that type of mutation to choose the next most appropriate ALK inhibitor. For actionable mutation, other actionable mutation, was one, uh, we have um, Leo agents like Entrectlib. The updated progression for survival is just 20 months, just similar to Crisotelib, but the cohort has more patients with uh, brain metastasis to begin with. But in future, we got vector agents like the Weprotrectlib in patients with pretreated uh, was one uh, 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 pretreated with a uh, uh, WAS1 inhibitor, the overall response rate can be up to 55%. It works in patients exposed to a WAS1 inhibitor before. It works in patients with brain metastasis. It also works in patients with the uh, most resistant sulfur fund type of mutation due to 32 hour mutations. So uh, BWAF, you uh, in this phase two study, it demonstrated the compilation of the bufalib and tromactilib can achieve a response rate of up to 65%. You have to use the compilation of the two, as everybody knows that the monotherapy use of the bufalib will paradoxically activate the MAP pathway that can only be effectively counteracted by the use of a MAP inhibitor. Not only it increases the response rate, it also lowers the toxicity. So you have to use a doublet for that type of v 6 E, uh, mutations. For wet mutation, these patients are, uh, to begin with, uh, with uh, multiple uh, liver, brain, and bone metastasis, uh, try the first line chemotherapy and uh, single agent uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor in year 2015. The, despite the negative uh, EGFR ALK result, uh, people have put him on uh, empirically uh, gefitinib and uh, crisotilib, but it's a lot helpful and uh, tried uh, chemotherapy and also autolocus uh, white cell infusion in, ta in Taiwan, actually. But eventually, the patient is a doctor and he's a uh, pathologist fan. It's very important to have a pathologist fan. Try every possible way to uh, find an actionable mutation for him. And eventually, we detected a uh, uh, translocations. We applied it when deadly for him, but before the drugs is available, in just uh, one month's time, there's rapid disease progression and the patient passed away from uh, chest infections. The reason that we use uh, ventilatidib uh, is not that um, strong. In fact, at that time, all the WAC inhibitor available has very low response rate and progression for survival. Second case is also a wet case. Uh, uh, he, uh, 
tried to uh, chemo irradiation as the neurotrophin setting, but the response is poor, so just uh, switch to a chemotherapy and on progressions, uh, immutrepon inhibitor. At the time, there's, uh, in fact, in the later course of the chemotherapy, we already tracked the uh, tumor specimen for NGS and it demonstrated the presence of uh, wet fusions. At time of progressions, we put him on electolib. If you look at the IC50 of electolib, it's even <coughs> better than most of the previous mentioned uh, wet inhibi inhibitor, like the carboxactolib and dactolib. In just uh, two months' time, you see the um, a good response that has been demonstrated. In the future, we got a better and better uh, wet inhibitor like the Loxo 2 line 2, a potent and highly selective uh, wet inhibitors. It demonstrated an objective response rate of over 77%. Recently, uh, the ASCO uh, released the data of uh, Blue 67. It's a bit uh, lower, but it's still comparable with objective response rate 60%, and their cohort is larger. For HER2, uh, this is a patient with a kind of an autoimmune disease, chronic smoker. The patient is a, a surgeon. Uh, at the time, he's uh, EGF out, out negative, stage 3A disease, uh, underwent lobectomy, atrophin chemotherapy, and chemo consolidation for exit radiations. Three years later, there's a relapse of bilateral lung metastasis. Uh, the uh, the uh, NGS result demonstrated the presence of uh, HER2 POM mutations. In fact, for HER2 mutation, it could be amplification with increase in the receptor on the cell membrane or with a very super active uh, receptor that um, uh, eventually increases the cell signal to the uh, tumor nucleus. And if you want to make a choice of therapy for this type of patients, for amplification, you might still consider using uh, trastuzumab with orbital in combination with uh, pertuzumab, which is an extracellular domain binding in nature. But for uh, poor mutation, it's better to use uh, a TDM1 or other PEN-HER2 inhibitor. These patients, because of a small volume of lung disease, he just uh, received the multiple cause of uh, SBLT, uh, but uh, suffered uh, limonitis. Unfortunately, earlier this year, there's a uh, little multiple liver metastasis I put him on uh, combination chemotherapy and immunotherapy as per Kilo 189 studies. But just after two cycles, there's an enlargement of the liver metastasis, which doubled in size, and also multiple little lesions, together with an increase in the CEA. But for uh, immunotherapy, there's a phenomenon called pseudoprogressions. So I just maintain that uh, regimen for one more cycle, repeat the past CT. And Quite fortunately for these patients, you see all the uh, liver metastasis is responding with regression of the size as the pre-treatment uh, size to the pre-treatment size, as well as uh, becoming less uh, metabolic. One of the previous uh, doubtful SCF lymph node also responded, and the CA is kind of uh, stabilized. But we're not satisfied with that. Majority of the disease is inside the liver. So we uh, offer the patient uh, selective internal radiotherapy with yttrium-90. The use of yttrium-90 uh, allows these uh, small little beans to pass to the end of the cap art arterial, but not bypassing the capillary. So, so it's kind of uh, internally irradiating the tumor. And after that, there's a very uh, rapid uh, dropping of the CEA. The latest CEA last week is just 100. To begin with, is uh, over 1,200. So even in poor mutant, sometimes do uh, even an actionable mutation, sometimes they they respond very well to immunotherapy inhibitor. If you combine it with uh, other uh, agents such as chemotherapy or radiotherapy, so there are more and more evolving highly selective inhibitors, making those uh, mutations truly actionable, and. Of it's very important to have an early detection of these mutations, otherwise the patient may deteriorate rapidly, as in the WETS case one. Finally, uh, two cases about the uh, immunotherapy also. These patients are 66-year-old uh, female liver smokers uh, with 
to begin with, there's a brain and also a lung metastasis and bone metastasis. We save the chemotherapy, hoping in radiations, and then single agent immunotherapy inhibitor. He, she enjoyed a very long duration of control of one, one year, and nine months before there's a intracranial and systemic progressions. In fact, at the very beginning, we know that the patient has a BRCA mutation already. In order to differentiate whether it's a somatic or germline, we order the uh, uh, blood testing, but it's negative, so it's a somatic mutation. But at the end, there's no much uh, therapy available. We still uh, try to patient on the course of olaparib, but it's not responding very well, probably because it's just a somatic mutation. For germline mutation, it exists in every of the tumor cells. But for somatic mutation, maybe just a little of which cover those uh, types of a mutation. For any mutation that would cause an underlying tumor DNA repair defect, there would be a production of some protein that's lethal to your body. We, we call it neoantigens. With that, uh, types of mutations, it, it actually increased the tumor uh, presentations by the NMHC complex as well as, well as the uh, T cell homing to the tumor micro environment. So indirectly, it completes the immune cycles and indirectly improves the efficacy of the an immune checkpoint inhibitor. So finally, we have this STK11 uh, KIP1 uh, mutations. This patient present to me with multiple soft tissue metastasis on, on the uh, uh, NGS testing. We find a high, uh, kind of a high uh, tumor mutation burden stable MSS, long resection of the BVAC mutation, and this uh, STK11 and uh, KIP1 uh, mutations is a concurrent uh, mutation that's been discovered. For this patient, I put him on chemotherapy plus immunotrepone inhibitor to begin with before the result come back. After one cycle, there's a pseudo progression. Why would I say it's pseudo progression? Because there's a rebound of the tumor, soft tissues, but on the second on the first cycle, uh, those tumor regress. So it's an uh, enlargement of the uh, soft tissue metastasis followed by regression of the same lesions. So it's a pseudo progression. So for that type of mutation, sometimes if you combine with chemotherapy, it might be helpful. It might be helpful. But unfortunately, for this patient, after four cycles of uh, combination chemotherapy with immunotrepone inhibitor, chemotherapy doublet, and on the fifth cycle, this soft tissue metastasis and not again. So really, that kind of mutation may really predict a very short PFS. Even there's fortunately a sort of progression being demonstrated, eventually the O4 progression fifth to five fold may be shorter with that type of mutations. So that's the summary for the whole sections. Next generation sequencing is an indispensable tool for us to make decisions on the primary treatments to look for any intrinsic resistance, to find some uh, rare sensitizing subtypes. It helps us to detect resistant mechanism and select the next line of targeted therapy. It also helps us to predict the benefit from non-targeted therapy, for example, immune checkpoint inhibitor in the form of positive predictor or negative predictor. So that ends my talk here.